Hey, what's up, guys? So, uh, just finished shooting uh, an updated version of best windshield not radar detectors. You can still see them uh, sitting here over my shoulder uh, and grabbed a bite to eat. And I figured let's just sit down. And now that that shot, I'll start editing tomorrow or next week or whatever. I'll work on it next week. And I figured now that that's done, let's just kind of chat radar detectors. So um, I guess kind of starting things off while people are joining, I wanted to share a couple other things that uh, I recently got in the mail. I figured it would be fun to just kind of pick up some old radar detectors. I saw some uh, posts on the forum and uh, just talking about like some of the best ones. And so first off, here is a radar Sentry. I'm actually not super familiar with these detectors at all. I only got into detectors at like 2012, something like that. So at night, seven years ago. So here's a radar Sentry, check this out. It has a removable antenna on the back, I guess. I don't know if that's the laser or the radar part, but you've got this bubble here, and then like this plastic thing that slides on. This thing detects S-band and X-band. So like old school, this is prior to X-band stuff. This is crazy. So back when they used to have those massive antennas that like you'd have to put in the back of a police car, like out of the trunk, that's what these things were for. And the range was only like a couple hundred feet or something, <laughs> but like super old school. There's no power cable at, uh, pop in batteries on the bottom and then turn it on. And I guess it just beeps when it detects stuff. I don't know, I haven't tried it out yet. I don't actually even have a, an X-band antenna anymore. I should probably pick one up so I can go test at some point, but that could be fun. I don't even know if anybody makes S-band stuff. So anyway, here's the Radar Sentry. If any of you guys have used these before or you know about them, let me know. Um, yeah, so I'm still learning about it. Just reading up on like the Radar Detector Museum, cool website where people's posting about them. Uh, here, the next one, this is the Fuzzbuster 2. So here, I'll, actually I can plug it in real quick. Let's do that. Let's plug it in and power it on. It just beeped. So check this out, it's a beast, old school. So this is, an, the original Fuzzbuster was X-band only. The Fuzzbuster 2 added K-band support. So <laughs> don't start a fire. <laughs> uh, I think this was from like, the 50s or 60s, the radar century. I think now we're getting into the 1970s, something like that. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but just when I was reading, I think that's what they were talking about. So we've got our volume thing here. And I noticed when you crank it all the way up, it starts to like false alert. So whenever it does go off, it beeps and this light glows yellow. So that's kind of its indication that it's detecting radar. I'm really curious to see, actually here, let's see the text K-band. Grab a Bushnell real quick out of the closet. I haven't actually even tried this yet, but uh, here, let's shoot the Bushnell and see what it does. Does it work? Maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. Let's try to turn the sensitivity down a little bit. It's firing, it's transmitting. It's not detecting anything. I'll have to try some other K-band guns later. Maybe the thing doesn't even work anymore. I literally just got it in the other day and trying it out for the first time. So anyway, Fuzzbuster 2. Have any of you guys used this before? I posted some pictures on Facebook and stuff, and a couple of you are like, oh my gosh, my dad had one of those in the 1970s. Wow. So anyway, huge thing. And then I've also got one that I couldn't really find as much information on. This is the Fuzzbuster Super Het. This thing is way heavier. Um, it's like shiny metal and everything. Uh, let's see. It's got switches. So D, H, and C. So highway and city mode. I don't know what the D is. And then I guess the volume. This is in really good condition. Wow. Um, point directly at it. Yeah, that's not really necessary for this kind of stuff. That might actually damage the radar detector. If you point it directly at it, I've seen people do that. So I don't want to point the radar gun directly at it, but okay. So let's see, I'll put it kind of in the corner here so you can see let's go this way. Uh, we've got our volume here. So let's try, I'm assuming this detects K-band. So I'll fire it over my shoulder. Hey, look at that, this one works. And it does have a bit of a latch. That's cool. All right, trigger. There we go. Cool, so that's the Fuzzbuster Superhead. Got a little light there. Oop, they light up when I switch modes, switch into C, so I guess city. I don't know what those things do. Wow, that goes off instantly. Wow, that's cool. We'll try the D mode. Doesn't detect anything. 
So I guess that switch, whatever it does, definitely does do something. I've got uh, the original manual and stuff. Whoever had this before kept it in like extremely good condition. I got the original box and stuff. But anyway, just wanted to show you guys some old school radar detectors that I picked up recently. I've also got the uh, original Escort that's coming in in the mail. I think that one should be here Monday. So eventually at some point, I think it would be fun to just learn how to use these things, maybe share a little bit more about them. Uh, I'm not... Obviously, this is like well before my time, you know, um, I'm not super familiar with them, but it'd be fun. I think just to do a quick video, be like, hey, check this out. Here it is. And I'm sure a lot of you guys would be able to post stories and experiences and turn the Bushnell off real quick more about them. But uh, as far as testing that I would maybe like next year, I'm thinking like we're starting to get into the rainy season now. And uh, at this time, kind of getting into the end of the year. So we're starting to look at, you know, what's the best radar detectors of the year and then i want to do best laser jammers and we're kind of starting to get into that stuff um and then testing i'm guessing i'll probably do like next summer um but anyway it's just kind of fun to like have these in the meantime for a side project if i'm bored i can putz around with those things but yeah uh mark j the original escort was awesome what was your experience with it and like what was special about the original escort i think it had like the the round dial thing that spins or something i saw um i'd have to look it up again again i never had one i'm not super familiar with it but what was special about the original escort was it like the sensitivity for its time or did it was it one of the first ka band detectors or i don't know uh, el gonzalez when you say late 60s early 70s uh, which detector are you referring to um is it the original fuzzbuster or which one came out in that time frame i had one nothing special when you guys are saying, like, I had one, let me know which detector you're talking about. Otherwise, it gets a little bit confusing with having multiple detectors and stuff. Um, the, the big fuzz buster. Yeah, I guess the Escort. So, Tennessee Jeff, you said you had an Escort and it was nothing special. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dennis Dodd, what's CT? You said you have a cheap one that picks up X, K, K, A, and CT. I don't know what CT is. That's interesting. Let's see, early 70s. Okay, so yeah, the big fuzz buster was late 60s, early 70s. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, and then I guess the fuzz buster 2 came out of that or after that. So anyway, I know we're just hopping on and chatting about old stuff, but uh, I see your, your questions are starting to come in about new stuff. So we'll definitely get into like new radar detectors and all that too. Like uh, Tennessee Jeff, you're asking about any chance the unit in R3 or R7 will ever mute KA band with speed? Um, usually, not usually low speed muting is designed not to mute KA band. Uh, it could always be like a, an option that they could create maybe with an app or something. They'll give us that kind of stuff. But I guess one of the issues is if you want to start introducing too many options into a detector's uh, list of settings, it just gets to be massive and it's too many options and settings to go through. And like, if you miss the option, then you have to like cycle all the way forward if it doesn't give you the option to go back. So I know a lot of times radar detector manufacturers don't want to give us too many options, which is sort of where like the uh, uh, the apps come into play because then you can just add tons of stuff and it's a lot easier to go through options in, a, in, in an app than it is for a radar detector. But uh, yeah, I guess they could do low speed muting for KA band, but usually because KA is legit, they're not going to do that. Uh, Mark J, S Corp form factor was great for its time. I think it was one of the first that fit onto a visor, built very well. Mostly just brings back great memories of college road trips. Cool. Yeah, it was, yeah, pretty small. It seems like it's maybe this big as opposed to it's probably like half the size of the Fuzzbuster 2. Again, just looking up pictures I've seen, it's maybe like half the height or something. This is pretty big. And this one, it is, I guess, here, let's pick up both. Fuzzbuster 2 and the Superhead. The Superhead, as you can see, it is smaller. They feel like weight-wise maybe about the same, but this one I think is just more dense because it's smaller. Um, but yeah, the Fuzzbuster 2 definitely does look bigger overall, made by Electralert. I don't even think they're still around anymore. Does anybody know the story with like Electralert and Cincinnati Microwave and Escort? Like just did one evolve from the other? Because I think like Escort came out of Cincinnati Microwave or the other way around. But I think Electralert was a totally different separate company. Cat in the Hat. Hey, what's up, Cat in the Hat? Uh, let's see. Tennessee Jeff. Sitting in a drive-thru, no need for the radar detector to go off. Yeah, I mean, that is a nice thing for the KA muting 
it can be nice to have that. Sometimes KA muting works for KA band or low speed muting, but usually not. Uh, let's see. Steve Webb, I had all these. I love the first escort. It had the needle in the middle to tell you how close the sor source was. Interesting. So instead of the LEDs, it was just kind of like an analog rotary thing to give you signal strength information. Interesting. Omer, yeah, Mike Valentine worked for Escort. I think so. And then like broke off and started his own company. Valentine One. Let's see. I'm not a huge history buff, I guess, as you guys can tell, but it is kind of fun for me to learn too. So uh, Bob Foreman, back in the late 70s, one of the car magazines uh, did a comparison of detectors and discovered the Fuzzbusters sent in had the Escort innards. Ah, okay, that makes sense now. I remember hearing that story. And I mean, if you look at how big the Fuzzbuster is, the massive one, it makes sense that you could put the smaller, better performing detector in it. And yeah, I remember one of the big things was Escort was the better performing one, and but they, I think it was Car and Driver or something, Motor Tram, whichever one it was, they did the test and like, they perform about the same. And then they opened this up. It's like there's kind of screws there and you know those ones or these ones, a couple screws, pop the case open and you're like, that's a different radar detector. So interesting. That makes a little bit more sense now actually seeing the detector, at least one of them on hand. Uh, Mike V came out of Cincinnati Microwave. Yeah, he was a legend. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. And it was in a car and driver test. They were outed. It's interesting. I don't see a ton of like testing being done by car and driver magazine anymore. The most you'll see is like an ad put out by Uniden or Valentine or different companies. They'll advertise, but you don't really see many tests done nowadays by the magazines. They're focusing more on testing cars, but not so much the radar detectors. I guess that's now a transition to just enthusiasts, people like me, you know? Do, do your test, post it on the forums or on your website or on YouTube or wherever. It almost seems like that's started to take over for uh, a lot of the magazines. Uh, Cat in the Hat. Oh, thank you, Cat in the Hat. I appreciate the donation for Luna. Yay, we were actually just about to pick up some new stuff that we needed, like new burp cloths and a new base for the car seat so my wife and I don't have to keep switching bases. So thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, Randy Powell. Got nailed at 91 on LiDAR. R3 never went off. Yep. Uh, talked my way out of the ticket. I ran radar and LiDAR for 25 years. Oh, did you run it yourself? Were you an officer or? Uh, R3 is a fantastic detector, but good luck avoiding LiDAR. Yeah, it's true. Radar detectors, they're not great at detecting LiDAR. That's totally true. Yeah. Do you have, uh, I guess, any maybe advice for us since you're a police officer? I get tons of police officers who watch this channel and... You know, I would love to learn from you too. Like, so do you have maybe some information about how you operated radar and laser and how you used it and different maybe tricks that you would do or, you know, what was it like for you on your end? We hear a lot about, you know, my end is the radar detector user, but not so much on your end. Let's see, El Gonzalez. The last uh, detector test from car and driver was 2014. The Max 2 beat out the V1 back then. I remember that, yeah, they were, uh, I think the big thing was the lockouts. The V1 obviously doesn't have any lockouts, and so the Max 2 was much quieter. And that was the big thing. They just had much fewer false alerts, which is totally understandable when you have a detector with GPS for low-speed muting and GPS lockouts. Um, I think that was the big differentiator between those two detectors. I know the V1 has low-speed muting with Savvy, but no lockouts. Let's see. Deb Bizzle. Um, I still have the original red line. Do you think performance-wise, does it still compete? 100%. Um, it's still a great detector when it comes to uh, KA band performance, and I guess K band with no filtering. But the issue is, I mean, kind of like we talked about with the V1 versus Max 2 discussion, there is no BSM filtering. There is no low speed muting. There's no GPS lockouts. Like it's an older detector with great performance, but it's not designed for modern filtering needs. And so if you run it maybe with X and K band turned off, and you run just KA band and laser, um, I know Randy talked about these detectors aren't always the greatest for laser, but on KA band, it's a beast. Uh, Mook is asking, uh, why does my RS's laser go off randomly? I'm guessing maybe you mean R3 or something? Why do my R's lasers? Detectors do sometimes false to laser. Uh, I actually did a whole video about this. It was like, I was, somebody posted about this in the comments. I think it's like uh, five minute Fridays, episode 15 or something. And it's a video talking about why radar detectors false to laser. Um, we've been seeing it with some of the R series. A lot of times it has to do with maybe a phone. They have like different sensors for 
uh, either ambient light sensors or detect when your head is there versus when it's not. So a lot of times they'll transmit stuff or the new facial recognition stuff with like face ID with the new iPhones. Um, that stuff can sometimes trigger radar detectors, especially if we have your phone on your dash and then your detector can pick it up. So that's a really common source. It's not the only one, but that's a common one that people see. Uh, radar, instant on is really the best way. Wait until you see a speeder and then trigger the radar. Instant reading. Uh, fastest mode will distinguish which vehicle is speeding the fastest. Yeah, so instant on, that's definitely a tough thing for radar detector users. There's ways around it, but as you said, it's it's tough to deal with. Um, did you ever get tripped up with fastest mode, Randy? Um, using that with your radar guns and maybe not knowing strongest versus fastest, like how did you make it definitively clear which vehicle was being clocked? Um, could you talk a little bit about too, that too? I think that would be really interesting. Uh, El Gonzalez, K-band falsing to BSMs now will make you want to throw it out. Yeah, that's the thing with the red line. There's zero BSM falsing built in. There's auto mode and TSR, which kind of sort of help, but not really. So uh, official key, is the X80 a good one to get without breaking the bank? In my opinion, not really. The whole Escort Passport series, the Passport X70 and X80, um, they're older M4s. They don't have modern BSM filtering either. Uh, they don't have GPS, but the newer ones do have Bluetooth. And so you can pair it with your phone to get at least GPS lockouts and stuff. They're not really that expensive, but I think in my mind, there's better detectors to get if you don't want to break the bank. Um, and I guess like, actually speaking of which, it's kind of what I just talked about in the video. If you're looking for a detector that's not going to break the bank, the two best and expensive ones would be the unit and DFR seven and nine. I talk about it from time to time and they'll be talked about at the end of the uh, best radar detector video, but better performance, typically uh, better BSM filtering GPS lockouts without requiring any sort of goofiness with the app. These would be the ones to get. Um, just go to the link in my uh, video description for the best radar detectors and you'll find links and coupon codes to this and stuff. So if you've been looking for something kind of like the X 80, that's cheaper, skip that and get the, uh, kind of the unit and uh, DFRs instead. Those are the ones to get. Uh, Arthur. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, well, let's get to this in a second. I wanted to come back to Randy. Uh, visual be the determining factor of who gets pulled over. Okay, good. I'm glad you're actually visually seeing, you know, which vehicle looks like it's speeding the fastest and then using your radar to confirm. Because um, I know it can be kind of tricky sometimes, if, especially if you've got a lot of vehicles to determine, you know, which car popped up, even if you're using fastest mode. Um, Fastest mode will display for approximately three seconds and then goes back to slower vehicle most times. Which radar guns did you use? Because I know that varies depending on the model and even things like some manufacturers, the fastest mode can only be the second strongest target versus other manufacturers, it could be like the sixth strongest target. So it can pick out fastest mode cars farther away. So I know that varies. Um, Arthur Ely, is the Valentine one uh, worth it to buy for $180? Potentially, it depends on the software version. If you get a new enough version, uh, 3.894 or newer, then yeah, it's a half price deal for the newest version of the detector. But the thing with the V1s is there's a lot of really old versions floating around that have much lower performance, are lacking modern filtering capabilities, are not compatible with Bluetooth, uh, things like that. And so an older V1, I would stay away from completely. But if you can get a new enough one, especially 3.894 or newer, $180 all day long, go for it. Especially considering you can't even buy one right now. In that case, it would make sense. Yeah. Let's see, do you know what happened to the V1? There's still a lot of stock. Yes, well, no, but yes, but no. Okay, so the video that I posted earlier this morning, new and updated radar detectors, we talked about this whole craziness with the V1. In short, nobody actually knows what's going on with the V1. They've been out of stock for six months. Um, they keep saying, we're gonna have them in two weeks, but they're waiting on parts. I've called to ask these, you know, what's going on. I actually have a new one on pre-order. They said it's, so from what we know, it's supposed to be more expensive between $400 to $500. Um, it should still kind of look the same, but we don't know if there's gonna be any changes internally, if they're gonna bring Bluetooth into the detector instead of being an external module. We don't know if there's gonna be a new display, if there's gonna be just different control levels and different potentiometers being used for the same exact detector. Like nobody actually really knows what's going on, but there's been a ton of speculation. Um, I've got one on pre-order, so as soon as they're available, they're gonna ship me one. Um, but I also asked them, hey, if it's the same thing, I wanna cancel because I already have a detector. So if there's nothing new, I'm canceling, but if there's something new, 
fine, ship one over and we'll do a old V1, new V1 comparison and stuff. And that way we get to see. But until then, I don't have a prototype V1. I, we're, they're waiting on parts, apparently. We're all waiting on new V1s. So hopefully it's something new and hopefully it's something really interesting. Uh, I'm excited to see whenever it comes out, but nobody actually really knows anything definitively. Randy, I have a lot of problems with larger vehicles being locked on when attempting to get smaller vehicles. Fast mode usually helps out. Yeah, I know typically with radar guns, the primary target is going to be the strongest signal, um, which is not necessarily the closest one because a big vehicle can return a bigger signal and you know this, but yeah, fastest mode should help pick out faster but weaker targets like smaller cars or somebody farther away. Let's see, Nana, is there a way to tell which radar and laser guns are used in my area? I'm in Alberta. Typically on the forums, uh, that's the best place to go. I know in Alberta, there's primarily KA band. I don't think there's a ton of K band, especially inside of Edmonton. Um, where in Alberta are you? Now there's Calgary, of course, is Edmonton. But that's the big thing where there's a ton of laser, there's a ton of Dragon Eye, especially in the rear. Um, and there's a lot of MRCD that's used both in Edmonton and in Calgary. So uh, in that one, you need pretty much something like a Redenso Pro-M or an RCM and ALP's front and rear is like the standard setup. Um, yeah, Randy, we're all curious at which uh, radar guns and I guess laser guns you used as well. Let's see. V1, we will know when they tell us. Yeah, Mike V is notoriously tight-lipped about uh, future stuff. And so we're all just sitting here waiting. I'm surprised you haven't done a review on the Escort M1 dash cam. Yeah, let's grab that real quick. <clears throat> so I've got one of those. So the M1, I've been meaning to do a review of that too. Honestly, it just comes down to time constraints. I've got so many things that I want to do a review on. Um, this is one of them. I've got one here. I've got actually two of them. I've got another one in the closet. 1080p dash cam works okay. Quality is a little subpar. It's convenient because you can just attach it to your suction cup mount like this and attach to a radar detector. Um, so $200, a little overpriced for what it is, but you're paying for the convenience to have kind of a sort of all in one package with a radar detector. The reason I haven't done a review of it yet is just, I'm super limited on time. There's so many things that I want to do and so little time I have, especially now once the baby is born, like I got complaints actually like Vortex, quit talking about your baby, post more radar detector videos and stuff. I was like, wow. But anyway, it's funny. The last video, the one that I posted this morning uh, new and updated radar detectors. Normally that would take me two to three days to edit. It took me two weeks, two weeks for that one video. It's just having to adjust to everything, whether it's lack of sleep or baby stuff, going to classes or just everything going on. It's a lot harder now to get everything going on. So my speed of getting videos out is way slower than before. And it was, I mean, tough before, but we'll see how it is. Um, so no more is the M1 worth the money. I think it's a little overpriced for what it is. You're really paying for the convenience. So if you want one suction cup for both the radar detector and the dash cam, one single power cable, power cable plugs into here and then passes through for the radar detector. That's what you're paying for. If, I would honestly recommend something like uh, the new A119. Here's the V2, but go get the V3. Um, it's a hundred... 100 ish bucks plus minus, depending on if you get the GPS module. 1440p, way better quality. It has parking mode if you want it. It's like half the price of the M1. Go get this. I plan on doing a review of this one as well. Um, so that one is going to be coming. So if you're looking for a dash cam, again, just go to my website and click on best dash cams. It's like right there on the front page. Go get one of these instead. If you really want the M1, go spend twice the price for reduced video quality, but a little bit more convenience. That's the story with the M1. Darren, it's called life. Welcome to fatherhood. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. Money, no object. Which detector would you take if you could only have one? I don't know. I mean, maybe Max CI 360. I like that one as an overall package. Great performance, BSM filtering, um, auto lockouts, Bluetooth stuff. I haven't had some of the issues I've been having with the 360C. Uh, with the latest update, especially. Um, I like that one as an overall package. I, there's some things that doesn't have MRCD, but I don't need it. You know, it's, it's RDD immune, but I don't need that either. 
So it's just a good all-around package. It integrates nicely with my car. I've got it tied into my buttons for uh, muting the detector or disabling the jammers or whatever. Um, so I like that one as an all-around package for windshield mounts, maybe R7 or Max 360C for performance and arrows and lockouts and all that kind of stuff. Those are probably, if I had to pick one, um, that's what it come down to. Uh, Glock fan, do you know anything about the Solo S5? Nope, just that the Solo S4 has been discontinued. Uh, and I talked about that in the video that I posted this morning too. There's no word yet on a Solo S5. I hope that if Escort comes out with it, they don't do the same stupid thing with the Solo S4 where they just repackage an existing detector with a new display and a new case, like actually improve the stupid thing because <laughs> that detector sucks. Um, so I haven't heard anything about a new Solo S5, but if they come out with them, I hope it's I hope it's a serious improvement over uh, the existing one. So, uh, man, people are raving about the blend mount. Yeah, that's a great thing. The blend mount. Um, here, I've got uh, half of the R7 clip over here for the blend mount. It's a pricey mount, but it's way better than the uh, the suction cup ones. Um, so, if you're looking for a good mount or an accessory, yeah, the blend mount. It's a great option. Solo S4 ticket notifier, kind of, but last minute alerts and it's a, it's a stupid detector. Um, cat in the hat. Do you know of a mid range dash cam with a rear camera that will mount in a rear pickup truck window? I haven't found any to mount on the flat rear window. Mid range. I mean, you could always do something like a black view or I think where a VOFO, a lot of times their uh, their things will rotate. So you can actually mount it vertically and then rotate the rear camera to point it out straight. Like that should do the job. Have you looked at those or is there something about those that you found doesn't work for you? Genesis and stalker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Randy, you've been talking about uh, the fastest mode stuff. I know stalker there. Uh, have you found this to be true? I guess, depending on which model you've used the stalkers fastest mode should be better than the Genesis fastest mode. Um, I know the Genesis, their fastest mode, it's limited to like the second strongest signal versus the stalker goes beyond that. I forget exactly how many it can do, but let's see. Didn't like them, but we'll look again. Yeah, definitely take a look. I know some of the rear cameras, they're very modular to be able to point in different directions, whereas the front cameras are typically more fixed. Um, so sometimes you'll have more control over the rear camera placement. Just take a look. The VFO ones, the Thinkware ones, the Blackview ones, they'll work well. There's plenty of them. Street Guardian does them. I mean, there's tons of manufacturers. Uh, Tennessee Jeff, doesn't Redenso mute KA with speed? Maybe. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I think it might, but I don't remember. Um, I'd have to double check. I don't know. What about the Beltronic Express 3 cordless? I haven't heard about that one. So the thing about cordless detectors is almost all of them suck. Even the very best one is terrible. There are no good cordless detectors, period. So it's not something worth spending a lot of time going for. Like if you need a detector, just plug it into a cigarette lighter. You'll get way better performance and everything like that. So yeah, just I say stay away from all of the, uh, the cordless detectors. It's not worth the money. Um, oh, Tennessee. Yeah. I have the Blackview 4k and a flat, uh, back pickup window. Works perfect. Yeah, exactly. The rear ones, I mean, they rotate in the mount, so you can point them any direction you want, including for vertical rear truck windows. Okay, cool. Thanks, El Gonzalez, for saying, uh, I don't believe the Redenso mutes KA with speed. Okay, cool. Good to hear that. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> Darren, care to speculate about Redenso's recent cryptic photographs? Um, like the Lego Porsche? I don't know. They're posting pictures of, like, Lego 911s. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. Maybe they've got something planned and maybe we'll see something at SEMA. I don't know, but hopefully they got something new and hopefully it's better than all this stuff. Maybe it's, they're going to release cars and 911s. I don't know. Maybe they're doing something specific, specific for Porsches for all we know. So I guess we'll see. Is Uniden working on an update for that uneven color of the blue arrow in the R7? It's funny you bring that up. There was a, uh, I know one of the updates for the R7 fixed the fact that like the middle of the arrow was a little brighter or darker, I forget which. And there was an update that improved it, but it didn't completely resolve it. Um, I've mentioned that to Uniden. Um, hopefully they'll address it. The, I noticed the communication with Uniden has kind of uh, dropped off a little bit. I mean, whether it was the beta testers or whether, uh, thanks for stopping by Randy, good to see you. 
uh, whether it's um, talking to enthusiasts and stuff, I've just noticed the communication has sort of died down a little bit. So I don't have as much information, I guess, to share with you guys as I typically would. But um, yeah, hopefully they will address the uneven arrow color stuff because that's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. I wish they would fix that. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, DeBizzle. Yeah, glad you're able to join into the live stream. Please, Tennessee Jeff, ask them to make an app for the R3. That would be great. I know we talked about it for the V1. And yeah, there's so much cool stuff that you can do with an app. We saw it, of course, with uh, Yav V1 originally, and then JBV1, and V1 Driver, and all the V1 apps. Um, Escort, they can do stuff with their own uh, Escort Live, but they're not very open to third-party people going in and using their interface. There used to be one. Um, did a video on it. It was ThreatLink and then Escargo Drive, where it tried to interface with Escort's Bluetooth stuff, but think that was the one or it might have been another app that was trying to do it and escort actually shut them down so they're not very open to third-party developers tapping into their bluetooth stuff um, i would love of course to see them go full open api like valentine did because it did amazing things for them and it lets other developers honestly do a lot of the hard work and improve their detectors <laughs> and add functionality that they don't offer you know i think it's an awesome idea but as far as unit in, I know it's been a really common request. I think there's even a dedicated thread on RDF talking about uh, adding Bluetooth and then uh, the ability to do, to do a, a third-party API so that people can start adding in apps. Maybe we'll have Yavi one and JBV1 and stuff for a unit in at some point, but I guess all it takes is them to add that in. So, yeah, let's see. Put some of these detectors back. Do a little cleaning, like everything organized. But what about you guys? What have you guys been up to lately? I know we've been talking about uh, uh, radar detectors. We've been asking questions. But what have you guys been experimenting with? Or have you guys been doing tests and stuff? I know we talked in the last video about new and updated radar detectors. I've shared some different tests that uh, different enthusiasts have been doing. And I'm curious if there's anything you guys have been testing in your own backyards against speed signs or whatever. Put this back. Guess I can always finish cleaning afterwards. Debizzle, can you recommend a site for picking up another red line cigarette lighter cord? I think just Escort's website directly. They sell different mounts and replacement cables and stuff, and you can get one that has like the remote mute button and all that stuff. So um, Escort's website, they're probably 20, 25 bucks. If you want one for cheap, maybe eBay. Maybe if you go on the forums and ask if somebody has a spare one, that could be an option. So like a used one. Um, if you just want a super basic, simple one, they make some, I've got one here on my desk, maybe like 10 bucks or something. Sorry, I got my tangle of cords. Hopefully that wasn't too noisy, but it's just a super simple cigarette lighter. You can see like there's no plugs, there's no mute button. It's just power and plug. And it's just another one that I had for something. Um, so if you need something super cheap, if you don't need the remote mute button capability, you can get something like this. That could be an option. Uh, are the unit in R7 or new R3 still having problems with the burn-in on the display? Interesting. I haven't heard a lot of people complain about that recently. I don't know if it's the change to, what is it, blue is a new default color or um, the new dark mode stuff. I haven't heard as many people complain. Uh, John at Redenso actually posted something interesting recently talking about some of the uh, the OLED display issues because we've seen them on unit in typically. Uh, I know some people have reported issues with escorts, like if you run it and it says highway, forever. Eventually it'll just burn in highway on screen. Same sort of thing. Uh, and the issue primarily is radar detector manufacturers are not big companies. So they can't get like crazy high quality custom stuff because it'll be super expensive. We kind of just get the leftovers from other manufacturers and we're sort of lower down the totem pole. So we don't really get good quality stuff. Um, and that just because it's a small industry. Uh, if we were like a cell phone company or something, you're going to spend millions and millions of dollars on this. Then you can get like custom high quality stuff and get it huge volumes. You know, that would be a different story, but it's one of the reasons why they just go to a supplier and they get whatever they need. And sometimes there's issues with displays. And he's like, we've seen that too with our detectors. I mean, it's kind of universal just because of the industry being sort of small. Um, Let's see, El Gonzalez pretty much retired the old 3.872 V1s and sticking to the R3. K-Band's making a comeback. Yeah, um, it'd be nice to have it updated, the V1, and then you can get a lot of the cool, you know, lockouts and that kind of stuff. But without it, it's it's tough to run a detector, a V1, especially with K-Band on and no Bluetooth stuff. 
even with savvy, like that's tough. Dennis Dodd, let's see. I recently bought a 2000 Buick Park Avenue, has mini USB cord coming out the rear view mirror. Um, and I used it to power my radar detector so I can get an extra free cigarette lighter for my Bluetooth CB and dash cam. Nice. That's a really convenient spot to have a cable and then just plug in a radar detector, kind of hardwiring out the mirror that way. That's that's really convenient. Uh, Darren, say you're working on getting a, a Stalker DSR2X, hopefully Sunday. Awesome. Did you get the one on eBay? Um, I saw one. I don't know if it's finished, but that was the one that was like super beat up or something. Um, did you get that one or maybe a different one? But yeah, that's a, that's a good gun. It's very capable. It's fun to play around with. Uh, Rod Johnson, I'm hearing rumors of cheaper K-band unit hitting the market for agencies that don't want to spend so much on other units. Um, yeah, I know Stalker has their new Stalker Patrol. Uh, it's kind of a simpler radar gun. Uh, it's like the DSR-2X we were talking about, but not quite as feature-rich. It uses K-band antennas instead. Um, it uses like USB plugs on the back instead of the traditional waterproof connector. It's still waterproof, I believe. But yeah, it's a less expensive basic version of the uh, Stalker dash mount radar guns, and it's K-band instead of KA. I don't think it's low powered. I'd have to double check the testing and stuff, but it's not its not something like Falcon HR or even MRCD or something. There's different levels of low power, but yeah. Spinner, hey, good to see you, Tom. Take care. Uh, Dennis, not sure where it's hardwired into, but it seems to work great. Okay, cool, yeah, I guess whoever run the uh, ran that mini USB cord, maybe to put a phone up there or something. They had a phone or some other accessory. It's cool that they had that. Really convenient for you. Yeah, Emirates, are you getting enough sleep? Last night we actually got some sleep. It was nice. We've been going to bed at like 8 p.m. And then just getting up every two, three hours for feeding and changes and all that kind of stuff. And typically I'm up around 4.30 or 5 a.m. Um, I've been trying to go back to bed afterwards, but usually she keeps me awake or she's awake and she's just not going back to sleep. So we're up walking the dog or walking around the neighborhood at six in the morning, seven in the morning. So my sleep schedule times have definitely shifted and trying to adapt to the sleep, drinking more coffee. I had caffeinated tea today because I ran out of coffee. I need to go after this at the grocery store <laughs> and get more coffee because I'm drinking it faster and using more of it. Um, but yeah, I guess that's one of the tough things. Like, uh, it's it's tough, uh, but she's smiling now, and it's the greatest thing ever. And yeah, it's awesome. I became a father eight months ago. I feel you. Hey, congratulations to you as well, Emerus. Hope I'm pronouncing your your handle right. Uh, Debizzle, what was a dash cam you recommended over the M1 for a basic and expensive dash cam? Uh, VFO A119 V3. You can get the cheaper V2 if you're doing driving mode only but the V3 has better quality and it also introduces parking mode. It's an extra 10, 20 bucks or something. So for most people, I'd recommend the V3. Uh, again, just go to my website, um, vortexradar.com and click on best dash cams or dash cam link at the top and you'll see it right there. You'll see my favorites from like VFO and Blackview and stuff. So, and I'll have a review coming of that, but you can just go get it now. I mean, it's gonna be a good option. So, <laughs> Paul, can you buy a new chair that doesn't squeak? I've WD 40 this chair so many times and I can't get it to stop squeaking. <laughs> and sometimes it shows up when I'm shooting the videos or I guess now on live stream. So I should probably get a new chair and even the, uh, here I'll back up so you can see these arm things, they kind of shake a little bit. And when I back up, it squeaks. It's just a chair. I don't know. We've had it for a couple years. I should probably get a better one that doesn't make so much noise. Um, I don't know. I've been spending my gun money on like radar detectors and radar guns and stuff, but I should probably upgrade my chair too. You're right. <laughs> oh, there's a squeak again. See all the time. Let's see, Dennis. No, how you feel? I've got a son that'll be three months in a few days. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. So we're just past the two month mark. You're at, almost at the three month mark. So we're almost neck and neck. Uh, there's a fun one. Clem Newton, what's the worst radar detector uh, you've ever tested? Legit one, probably this. The Solo S4, awful performance, confuses K-band and K-A-band. Um, there's no BSM filtering at all. There's no TSR. There's no GPS. There's like nothing. It's super basic and simple. I think it was 250 bucks last I checked. Now it's cheaper. I think, but 
this thing sucked. I was actually kind of surprised at how bad it was, especially because people really like their cordless detectors and stuff. But worse than that, I think would have to be the Batman detector. Just hilariously bad. That performance, I mean, it's not actually spectrum immune. It doesn't actually have any laser sensors back there. Um, it speaks Chinese and Russian and English, but constant BSM falsing. Uh, they sell these things all the time on Amazon. There's tons of them on eBay. You'll see like ads and stuff on Instagram for these. Um, probably the worst detector I've ever tested is these. And they have a ton of them that say, you know, this one has the Batman logo. Sometimes it's blue. Sometimes it doesn't. It's 10 or $20. You can buy them on Alibaba for a couple bucks each and they'll resell them for 20, 30, 40 bucks. And yeah, this is probably the worst one that I've tested is this. Let's see. Um, Mimi, so this is interesting. I don't actually know the interest, the full answer to this. How does Rodenso do a better job at BFM filtering than Uniden? Is it firmware or is it internal chip? I don't know the full ins and outs as far as what the engineers are looking at and the degree to which they can see the differences in the signal. So it has to be a combination of hardware, how deeply they can analyze the signal, as well as the software with can they actually tell the difference? Um, so yeah, that's... I don't know why though. It's got to be something around in there. It'd be awesome to like sit down and talk to the engineers about that. Um, I did a video with John at Redenso when I was there a couple months ago, actually showing the differences between like a Mazda um, and like a radar gun. And it's really, really tough to tell the difference. That's why like CX-5 is false almost everything, including even the Redensos. Yeah. Oh, Brian. Okay, cool. This worked for you. Uh, thanks for the tip on the uh, R3's red light camera database on the DFR7. Uh, my son used the DFR, so I did that update this morning. Good. Yeah. So I actually saw that on RDF. Somebody had posted, like, they tried it, and it worked. And I was like, that's awesome. Thank you for finding that. I just turned around and shared it here. So, yeah, that was a cool thing. I'm, I'm happy to hear that your son was able to do that, too. Uh, let's see. Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba is like a place to buy stuff from China, typically in bulk, um, usually wholesale, and then it gets turned around and resold on Amazon and stuff. But sometimes you can buy like individual stuff. So it's kind of like a wholesale buy stuff from China website. Um, radar. No way I'd buy a radar detector for $10. You get what you pay for. But I don't know. Sometimes I wonder about that with people who buy this kind of stuff or cheapy Cobras, and then they think radar detectors don't work, which is in its own way can be useful. <laughs> and then eventually they're like, okay, I need to find something better. And then hopefully eventually they'll step up to something better than this or hopefully better than this too. No filtering. KA band, chirp, 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 chirp. No, I will not be quiet. Chirp, 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 chirp. Yeah. Constantly falsing. Uh, the x E8. Yeah, that's the thing. So there's a couple detectors that they have the same internals and they put different cases around it. Um, you know, I like mentioned the red or the blue or just a different case altogether, the G8 or V8, whatever. It's the same internals. Um, uh, Metrovan, uh, New York City is installing 2,000 speed cameras around schools and metro many uh, streets. Yeah, I guess that's kind of in tandem with the, uh, the multi-radar photo radar vehicles that they're installing. And I've seen some like fixed cameras as well. So that's one of the places where they seem to be doing more kind of like fixed and I guess mobile speed enforcement as well. Um, yeah, more of that is going on in New York. You're right. Uh, in California, I had a KA, KA pop alert for 33.8 that went on and off for 30 seconds. Um, it dropped as the officer went past. Any idea? So that's interesting because it sounds like that could be legitimate. Like, hey, it kept alerting to pop. And then suddenly I passed a cop. So pop falses are super common in California. If it's uh, the CHP, they're almost exclusively stalker. So 34.7, I don't think they even run 33.8 or even K-band in most of California. I know there's a couple places like some parks and some smaller cities where maybe they'll run 35.5 or some K-band, but it's almost all 34.7 from what I understand. Uh, Hunter, I have a Fuzzbuster. Cool. And so chances are, even though it went off to pop, and then you saw a cop, chances are it's still a pop false, just considering how often that can happen. And there really isn't much 33A from what I understand in use in the first place. So Hunter, I have a fuzz buster. That's awesome. It works. Do you have the original one? Like that's the X band only one, right? Like, so obviously not gonna be super useful now, but it still works, does its thing. 
Ohio's a mess when it comes to all the bands at radar. Yeah, you've got X Band and K Band and KA and Laser, including the Dragon Eye. Like you got a ton of stuff there. I think that's probably one of the reasons why there's so many radar detector manufacturers um, that are based in Ohio. Like Escort is there, Redenso is there, Valentine is there, Cincinnati Microwave obviously there too. Like most everybody is there. Uniden's not there. Um, Chinese guys are not there, <laughs> to my knowledge. But yeah, there's so much stuff in Ohio. Let's see. Any update on R7 immunity? Nope. No updates. I, of course, sent the information over to Uniden. No word on, is it serial number thing? Is it a build thing? Are they going to be changing it? Is it a hardware thing, software thing? I don't know. Uh, people have asked for updates. I don't have any updates on what the issue is, if there's going to be any updates, if it can be updated via software only, or my guess is it's a hardware thing. So I really don't know. I just, I test. Here's the results. Here's what I saw. Okay. And then if they want to maybe share some information about what they're going to do, cool. I'm happy to share that. But with, in this case, I don't have any updated information about the R7 RDD immunity stuff. Oh, interesting. Uh, Haflidi Johnson, cool name. KA band is what's used here in Iceland and the police aren't using anything other than that. That's nice. If they're using only KA bands, very cool. Uh, 360C discussion, competent detector. Have you guys updated to 1.10? Like I did the update and now my 360C can no longer connect to Wi-Fi and it can no longer connect to Bluetooth. That was the case for both of my 360Cs and my IXC. But the other detectors I updated, like Maxi i360 and Redline EX, those, even with the updates, I can still connect to Bluetooth. But it just seems like the ones with uh, Wi-Fi, for whatever reason, I've tried updating on the Mac, I've tried updating on Windows, I've tried doing full, complete restores, I've talked to Escort, and like I can't get my detectors to connect back to Bluetooth anymore, or Wi-Fi, it's crazy. So... I haven't heard of that issue happening to anybody else, but I don't know. Like, have you upgraded to 1.10 on the 360C and are you still able to connect to Bluetooth? So I'm curious. Mm. Haven't had any problems with my 360? Oh, good. Glad to hear that. Uh, Cooney left and the update frequency really slowed down. Yeah, it has. Their new person, um, he's of course still working on things, but yeah, stuff has slowed down. Uh, I think in the future, though, I'm not going to share as much about some personnel changes, even though that happens. Like Escort, they're getting new management coming on. Um, there's personnel changes all the time. And yes, that affects stuff. But I notice sometimes that can cause issues when I share that kind of information, even though I think it could be useful as far as future changes and what that means down the line. I don't really want to get into corporate stuff or speculation or future predictions. So I think in the future, I don't think I'm going to be discussing Cooney type stuff or personnel changes. If I go to SEMA or CES and we interview the CEO or the CFO or whoever, you know, president, we want to do a video. Cool. But I don't think I'm going to get too much in the future into personnel changes. I thought that would be helpful, but I noticed sometimes that causes more problems um, just with confusion and speculation and stuff than anticipated. So it didn't really have the desired outcome, which is honestly kind of a surprise to me. So yeah, I guess I'm not going to be talking about that stuff as much anymore. Uh, Hafleedy, is there any new update for the R3 recently? 1.50 is the latest update for that. It has K-Block and then some updates for, I guess, the red light camera stuff isn't going to affect you. But really, well, I guess for you, it won't affect anything because it's all KA band for you. So the Honda Acura filtering filtering with K-Block isn't going to affect you if you're running KA band anyway. So yeah, 1.50 is the latest update, but that update doesn't have anything specific for you. Let's see. Yeah, you're very fortunate to uh, not have to worry about K-band false alarms. Yeah, that's awesome. Baby woke up, gotta go. Totally understand. See ya. <laughs> Bye, Emerus. Uh, let's see. I don't have an R3, but I love the tip about updating the red light camera database. Yeah, that was interesting. You've got like the LRD950, which you could load on DFR7 firmware onto that. You have the DFR7 and DFR9, which can be loaded with R3 red light camera database. So the stuff is kind of interchangeable sometimes, which is super useful uh, just to get an update in a way that wouldn't traditionally be possible, I guess, or isn't available yet for the manufacturer. So it's kind of cool stuff. Uh, let's see, I was in the area talking more about the KA band pop hit. Um, if you, Rod, if you have like maybe dash cam footage or something, uh, ideally it would be nice to maybe visually see like let's grab this 
I know this isn't something you can see at like 60 miles an hour or two cars are going by, but the guns that shoot KA band pop, if they're in the vehicle, they're going to have a B3 or maybe a Python. They support it. But the antennas look like this. Uh, the MPH antennas, they're black, um, as opposed to the stalker antennas, which they're a little bit more kind of ruggedized and metallic on the outside. They're also black. Typically, some of them are going to be kind of yellow, like you can see with the Decatur antennas. But if you look um, at the radar gun itself, the antenna is typically what you're going to see driving by. And trying to tell from the power cable stuff on the back is a little tougher. The easiest thing is if you can somehow, again, not easy to do when they're driving by. Totally get it. But at some point, if you can look and see, is it an MPH gun? Then, yeah, he's going to be transmitting on 33.8 and he supports pop. Um, chances are you're going to be seeing stalker units. I know like Darren just picked up a DSR-2X. Those are going to be some of the really common ones. They transmit on 34.7, and so there is no pop on that kind of stuff. Um, so that might be one of the best ways to like for sure confirm. But, yeah, I know, especially since pop falses are common. All right, put it back. Let's see, as far as long range, would you still consider the red line better than the R7? No. So that was one of the big deals with the R1 and R3 when they came out. They were the first detectors to finally dethrone the original red line when it came to range. Then the R7 came out and had a new condenser lens on the front, which improved sensitivity slightly and added a little bit of additional range. So the R1, R3, and R7 are the only windshield mounts that can actually outperform the original Escort red line. So, yeah. Uh, and Radar Roy, yeah, he passed away a couple of years ago. It was pretty sad. Um, yeah, he used to do videos and stuff, and I didn't plan on, like, replacing him or anything. That wasn't the point. It was just, I like, making videos and testing and learning and sharing, and so I'm just, this is what I do for fun. I mean, this is, like, honestly part of my sanity with baby stuff to take a break because I'll just come here and play with radar detectors or learn about it or discuss this with you. Like, I just spent my afternoon doing this and now I'm just sitting here chatting with you guys. Like this is just what I do for fun, you know? And I guess now I also do it for a living just cause it sort of turned into that, but that wasn't the point to like start a business or anything. It was like, Oh, I can do this for a living. That's cool. Great. I'll do that. But yeah. And thanks for the, uh, the compliments. I appreciate it. Walking encyclopedia of countermeasures knowledge. I guess I'm always still trying to learn. That's why I got like all these new radar detectors and stuff. I'm just, constantly wanting to learn because that's fun for me i guess but that's been one of the weird things to like have the baby and suddenly you're back at like square one and i'm like okay i'm pretty familiar with this kind of stuff versus going with the baby and i'm like wow i'm at the bottom of the learning curve and i have no idea what i'm doing and i'm still trying to figure all this out and i got so much to learn wow okay <laughs> so that's been kind of a interesting experience lately i'm not used to that because i'm pretty good i guess at this point with radar detector stuff just because i've spent so much time with it already but when you start with something brand new then you got to start all over learning again uh is the r7 a good choice running up and down i-95 for the most part yeah great range um there's no the mrcd stuff is not very good on the r7 though so the pro m if you're looking for something now may actually be a better choice because of the multi radar detection um and better filtering and stuff so if you wanted maybe for new york i think that might be a better choice um, but other people in New York might be able to give you better information, but just knowing what I know about New York, this localized stuff sometimes is a little bit tougher for me, but knowing what I know about New York, the pro M might actually be the best choice for you. Uh, Shane R seven auto lockouts, uh, talked a little bit about that in the video posted today. So I guess I can share a little bit more about that, that I didn't talk about in the video. So we're all still waiting on auto lockouts. We were told originally it was going to come in the first firmware update, and then, well, other updates came to add additional features, and we're still waiting on auto lockouts. My guess is it has to do with some of the pending lawsuit stuff between Escort and Uniden. Escort is actively suing Uniden for their GPS lockouts. They actively sued Redenso about this, too. Uh, that they recently settled and worked out, but to my knowledge, the Uniden one is still going on. Now, there's another patent that looks like it expires... Uh, June of 2020, so next year, maybe it's that patent they're waiting on to expire, and then they're going to be able to uh, release GPS lockouts. There's several patents for this, not just one, and maybe, total guess, speculation, maybe not true, but it might just be the case that uh, there's multiple patents, and they thought it was this patent. Once it expires, they can do it, but there's also another patent that expires a year later that's presenting or preventing them from being able to do that. Is that the case? 
I don't know. Does it have something to do with pending legal stuff? Well, when there's lawsuits pending, usually companies don't want to talk about the details too much, right? So I've asked them. I haven't gotten a good straight answer about it, and I don't really know. So we're all just kind of sitting left wondering what's the story with auto lockouts, and I don't have the better information for you than that. So I'm honestly just wondering, just like you guys, about all that. Uh, Sudong, I'm getting a lot of uh, MRCD alerts in the suburbs of Chicago. MRCD is in use there. I think it's MRCT specifically on some of the polls nearby people have alerted or have reported. Um, which radar detector are you using? If you're using the Redenso, it should be some of the best at this, um, but you can turn, I think it's MRCT on and MRCD off. Ah, okay, never mind. R3. Not much you can do. You just turn it on and that's that. There's no additional filtering like there is with Redensos. There's uh, no independent control for MRCD versus MRCT. So this is kind of one of the areas where the Redensos are typically a little bit better. Though I have heard in some situations, either MRCD or T, like sometimes the Unidens are a little bit better than the Redenso, but I don't have the multi radar here. So it's not something that I really experience a lot. So for that, I guess with the R3, you just have it turned on and you can't really do much else. But if you're getting a lot of falses, you could always try turning it off and then relying on the GPS database to notify you of the speed cameras and use those alerts instead of the active MRCD alerts to notify you when the multi-radar stuff is in use. So that could be an option. Um, but again, hop on the forums. You'll get maybe better multi-radar and localized specific information than what I could tell you being, in a, being over here in Seattle instead of over in Chicago. Uh, Theron, so asking about windshield tint. Does it affect my unit in R1's performance? Generally, no. Uh, it will affect it if you have any sort of metallic-based tint. But if you have a non-metallic tint, it's going to be just fine, and the radar signal can pass through unobstructed. Uh, an easy way to test is to take the radar detector and put it in front of the windshield. If you've got a speed sign or some source of radar, put it in front of the windshield. And then if you have your window, take the radar detector and move it outside the window and see if the si signal strength suddenly gets a lot stronger. And then move it back to the windshield inside the car and see if the signal starts to get a lot weaker again. You can do this and actually just test to see if it impacts the performance. And so if you don't know what your windshield tint is made of, that's an easy way that you can just test and verify for yourself. So little tips and tricks that you see on forums, people trying and reporting. And I guess that's just the thing. If you learn about this stuff, you find it and you're like, oh, here's something that I saw somebody else try. Somebody in Chicago tried this. Here's what they reported. Or somebody tried the windshield tent stuff on the forums and they reported that. Like that's all I'm trying here or all I'm doing. It's just, it's what I've seen online. Paul Rogers bought and installed my first jammer this summer. Thanks to your help. Awesome. Congratulations. Full ALP and got hit twice so far. It's got to be a pretty cool feeling, especially the first time you get shot with laser and you, boom, your ALPs are going off and you're like, oh my gosh, did they work? Did I disable properly? Like, whoa. So yeah, it's a, a heart racing experience for sure, especially the first time you get hit with laser. Well, that's funny. You say you got hit, hit, you got hit with laser twice. I see laser so infrequently here. I actually wish I got it more just because I had more chances to play with my equipment and get saves and use it. I have primarily radar here, but there is some laser that's in use. I just happen not to get hit that much. But I know some people get hit with laser all the time. I wish they would get hit less. So grass is always greener, I guess. Uh, Hafliti, do I have to mark speed cameras ahead of time so it will let me know before I get to the speed cameras? So since you are in Iceland, there is no preset database built into the R3 that will notify you when you're approaching any of the speed camera. So if you know where they are, or if you want to see them ahead of time, use the mark feature. I'll grab an R3. Yeah, just uh, use the mark button on the detector right there and just mark whenever you pass them so it will notify you for you. That way you kind of create your own speed camera database um, because there is no pre-built one available for you in Iceland. So that could be an option. <clears throat> Yeah, user mark at 800 feet. Yeah, exactly, El Gonzalez. One laser was to the rear. Ooh, on top of an overpass, shooting from the rear. Yeah, that's crazy. Rear overpass shots. Good thing you got, uh, well, I'm assuming you got, oh, sorry, no, I missed your first post. Only two speeding tickets in the last seven years were laser. Yeah, it's funny. That's a question that people ask a lot. Like, should I get rear laser? And that's the thing where in the U.S., most of the time they shoot in the front, but there are places that shoot in the rear. 
And I don't want people to have to unnecessarily spend money because it costs more money to get rear heads and the installation is tougher to run the cables all the way back to the vehicle. Um, but it's one of those things where better to have it and not need it than to need it like you did and not have it. So yeah, if you're gonna go for laser, a lot of times it makes sense to get shot in the rear. Um, I've seen rear laser out here in Washington as well. Uh, so it's just one of those things where, yes, I know it costs more, but if you're gonna get jammers, it, even though you're saying less than 5% of tickets are laser to the rear, you're just kind of playing with the odds there. So just up to you as far as whether or not you want to get rear jammers. But yeah, uh, Rod Johnson, rear tint for detectors with rear antenna. Um, yeah, I wonder about that too. Maybe it could affect the rear signal strength or it could affect the arrows. Um, I've seen some things in testing. This isn't an arrow detector, but if I put it up on the windshield, the arrows work a little bit better than if I put it down at the bottom of the windshield, which I do sometimes because it's easier for the GoPro to see the screen. Windshield is tinted like this. GoPro is here and you can see the arrows. So it's good for YouTube videos, but sometimes that can impact the performance of the arrows because maybe the rear seats are actually blocking some of the signal coming in from the rear. So typically the arrows work better higher up, um, but it, it is tougher for videos and stuff. So I got a new mallet to actually hold it back there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Last ticket is actually, I think in Arizona years ago, funny story. I was in, um, I'm in Seattle now. And the way I, uh, wound up in Seattle is I spent a year road tripping around the country and I was just in Seattle when I got tired of driving and I didn't know where I wanted to actually go live. <laughs> so I was just here and, uh, just hanging out, you know, talking to people, drinking the coffee, trying the beer, the food, seeing the landscape and stuff. And turns out I loved it. And that was how I wound up in Seattle. But that was 2010 or 11, something like that. Um, and I got a ticket in Arizona. I was coming off the highway and I didn't slow down fast enough. I'd been on the highway for so long and apparently speed limit dropped. I didn't realize that. Boom. I got a ticket. It was before I got into countermeasures. Um, and yeah, I got a ticket and that was one of the things that made me want to get some level of protection. Not because I was speeding. I just, I'd been so used to driving highway speed and I didn't slow down fast enough and got a ticket. Um, I was like, okay, let's get something to where I can give myself some a little bit more protection and then it eventually snowballed into all of this completely unexpectedly, but yeah, <laughs> I guess that was my last ticket. I haven't gotten one since running countermeasures, knock on wood, hope to keep it that way. But if I did, I would share the story of how I got it and what happened and what was the issue. Was it instant on? Was it a head installation failure? Was it, what happened? I mean, the stuff is not invaluable, so it's possible even with all the stuff I got on my car and everything I know, I can still get a ticket too. So there is no complete ticket protection other than don't drive, I guess. <laughs> um, talking about radar jammers, illegal. I don't know about the laws for uh, for Iceland. Maybe they're totally different. What police use in Ontario, uh, radar and laser. I'm sure you can ask um, other people in Ontario. Maybe somebody else here can talk about what's in use in Ontario. I know one of the big things, of course, is they're very anti radar detectors there to where the penalty, I think it's like $500 or more and they will confiscate radar detectors. So, um, it's kind of risky there. So people are like hardcore go for something undetectable if needed or yeah, Ontario is tougher. It is tougher there. So JTK quick and get a stealth detector if you're going to run it up there, but I'm not going to advise breaking the law of course. So if you're in an area like that, drive at your own risk. Uh, Sir Statistic. I love my V1 even more so than with the JBV1. Yeah. Uh, I'm dying to know when Mike V will release the next generation unit. Aren't we all? The hundreds of pages of discussion on RVF about that. Aren't we all? Um, I've used the V1 since his first year. Wow. Updated it three times. So yeah, you, you know your V1 very well. New V1 coming in two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Hector here. Any other people had issues with their R1? I bought mine and like four months into it, shorted out. Was it a power cable issue? Um, I know there's been some issues with older power cables failing that have gotten replaced under warranty. I've seen some things with the OLEDs that we've talked about and sometimes there's been speaker failures. So there's been some issues, but not a ton of stuff that I've heard reported recently. Um, if you want to maybe talk about shorting out with the R1, you could always try a different power cable to kind of rule out the cable versus the detector and see which one it is. So that can be something to take a look at. Otherwise, maybe having warranty stuff, take a look at it. Um, 
or post in the forums, I guess. Uh, Paul, I bought a laser gun to test the ALP. Very nice. That's the way to go. Which uh, which laser gun did you get? There's a ton of them out there, so it's always fun to see. Hopefully, you got something that's in use in your area. That way, you get a sense of what the officers can see and how your jammers function against your specific jammers and jam codes or acquisition speeds. Like It's nice actually testing with the guns in your area. PL3, great gun, super popular. Yeah. Did you get it with the uh, power cable or did you get it with the battery in the charger? Iceland, wow. It's a fine for any kind of radar or laser jammers over $4,000. That is hardcore. Even laser jammers, wow. Yeah, so the penalties definitely vary. I didn't realize it was that substantial. Wow. Oh, you got both power cable and battery. Very convenient. Uh, let's see. Rod, I don't want anybody seeing alerts at night, so I visually tested different colors in the dimmest mode uh, through the tint. Unscientific test, but red one. Hardest for me to see at a distance. Interesting. I know there's the whole thing about running red because it has the least impact to your eyes for night vision and stuff, um, but interesting to hear that it's also the hardest to hear. Maybe that's related to having less impact in your eyes, or here, hardest to see. You don't hear with your eyes, it turns out. I got three tickets last month, two in one day. Wow. I probably either need to slow down or get another cord for your red line. Yeah, if you want to run a radar detector, you better get another cable for it. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, if you're not running a cable, obviously you're going to need one. If it was that you had the detector, was it a radar ticket or a laser ticket? Or I guess maybe you can expand a little bit on your experience when you got the ticket. How did your equipment fail you? Was it just that the power cable went out? So, and I'm sure your insurance is going to be spiking up. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, instant on can be tough. Yeah. Yeah. No need to drive unsafe. Yeah. If you're getting a lot of tickets like that, yeah, maybe part of the bull run. I heard somebody just did a cannonball recently. Um, another run there. So I know that happens sometimes too, but hopefully not that. Yeah. So anyway, 342. I'm getting a little tired. I think I might uh, clock out here in a few minutes and go rest. Gonna take it easy sometimes. You know, it's, I guess also one of the things is like, let's do videos. Let's crank out content. Let's shoot this. Let's edit that. Let's live stream. And then I'm also like, even with two cups of caffeine, I'm still less tired. So <laughs> life, I guess, learning to take it easy and slow it down, even though I still want to make videos and read and learn and test and stuff. But anyway, okay, I feel like I'm getting tired. So I think I should probably go and rest, get ready for tonight's round of baby stuff. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, participating. Uh, that should be the next video that I want to sit down and work on. Hopefully I can get it knocked out in a week. That would be really cool. I'd be very happy if I could do that. I know it would have taken me less time before, but it is what it is now. So cool. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I know it's a Friday. Go enjoy your Friday. Have an awesome weekend. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.